time. Good morning. Welcome to this public meeting of the Consumer Product Safety Commission. Today we're considering CPSC's final rule on safety standards for magnets. Now this day has been long coming and I'm pleased to be chairing this meeting. Six years ago, a court overturned the CPSC's 2014 safety standard for magnets. Since that time, staff has worked tirelessly to investigate this hazard even more deeply and propose the mandatory safety standard that is before us today. In that process, the agency gathered data uh, demonstrating unequivocally the effectiveness of safety standards in this area. These tiny, powerful magnets cause severe injury and even death when swallowed by small children and teens. During the time that CPSC previous, uh, previous rule was in place, there was a dramatic decrease in the injuries and deaths. That progress was reversed when the 2014 rule was overturned. In fact, according to the staff's briefing package, while an average annual estimated injuries dropped from about 2,300 per year to about 1,300 per year when the rule was in place, that number rose again to 2,400 uh, per year once the rule was vacated. It's time to put a mandatory safety standard back in place and to stop these horrific injuries from happening. Before we can move to consideration of the final draft rule, we have several staff members present at this meeting to answer questions if any, from my colleagues and myself. With us are Steve Harshani, who's an engineering psychologist with the Division of Human Factors, Director for Engineering Sciences and Project Manager for Magnets, and also Mayun Kim, Attorney in the Regulatory Affairs Division of the Office of General Counsel. Also in attendance are Jason Levine, Executive Director, Dwayne Ray, Deputy Executive Director, Austin Schlick, General Counsel, and Alberta Mills, Commission Secretary. Each commissioner will have up to five minutes for questions or comments. And after the questions are complete, we will then consider any amendments. Turning to that question round, I personally don't have any questions, so I'm going to defer to my colleagues. Um, and first, I should have actually probably just done a roll to make sure that we're all here. So I'm going to do that. So, Commissioner Biacco? Here. Uh, Commissioner Feldman? I'm here. Thank you. Commissioner Trumka. I'm here. And Commissioner Boyle. I am here as well. So turning back to the questions, I didn't have any. So Commissioner Bianco, did you have any? None for me either. Thank you, sir. All right. Commissioner Feldman, do you have uh, questions, comments? I do not. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Trumka. I've got no questions. Thanks. And Commissioner Boyle. I have no questions either. Thank you. All right. So. Having heard no questions, staff is excused, and we're going to begin consideration of the package that's before us. Uh, I will now entertain any amendments to the draft proposed rule that is before us. Commissioner Biacco, did you have any amendments? I do not, thank you. Uh, Commissioner Feldman, do you have any amendments? No, Mr. Chairman, I do not. Commissioner Trumka, do you have any amendments? I do not. And Commissioner Boyle, do you have any amendments? Thank you, Mr. Chair. I do have an amendment. Um, Commissioner Boyle, you're a little soft, so you may need to speak a little loudly to the, the okay. microphone. Is that better? That is better. Thank you. Okay. So um, you're recognized for three minutes. Okay. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, my amendment has two parts. Uh, the first would strike the two additional exemptions that were not in the NPR, but have been included in the draft final rule. My amendment would, though, keep the exemption for the uh, product subject to the F963 toy standard because that standard provides the same level of protection against the ingestion hazard that we are considering in the rule today. The second part of the amendment is intended to clarify the scope of the rule by revising the definition of subject magnet product. The goal of the magnets rule is to protect as many children as possible from the devastating injuries these magnets can cause and I believe that the best way to do that is to maintain the broad definition of subject magnet product as the commission proposed in the NPR. And so that is the purpose of the my, uh, first part of my amendment to strike the exemptions. At the same time, rather than adding exemptions to the substantive requirements of the rule, I believe it's appropriate to uh, include a narrowly tailored but clear definition of products that do not constitute a subject magnet product which is what the second part of my amendment would do. 
So together, uh, the two parts of the amendment are responsive to commenters who sought clarity on the scope of the rule, while also taking into account the 10th Circuit discussion about the potential utility of magnet sets in the context of mathematical, scientific, and other types of uses that don't pose the same type of ingestion hazard as, say, play and jewelry, for example. So specifically, the second part of my amendment spells out products that are not included in the definition of subject mag magnet product. And those are products that are sold and or distributed solely to school educators, researchers, professionals, and or commercial or industrial users exclusively for educational, research, professional, commercial, and or industrial purposes. I would note that the home use reference is eliminated as redundant uh, because that would have exempted home use products that are not subject subject magnet products in the first place because they are not designed, marketed, or intended for entertainment, jewelry, mental stimulation, stress release, or a combination of those purposes. So to be clear, the exemption, that exemption would have been superfluous because if such a product is not designed, marketed, and intended for those purposes, then it already would be excluded as not meeting the subject uh, magnet product definition. So I believe that the definition as originally proposed in the NPR has sufficiently broad scope that will protect the greatest number of children. And my amendment keeps that broad scope intact while at the same time defining those products that do not fall within the scope. And so to summarize, my amendment would remove the additional exemptions, keep the toy exemption, keep the definition as originally proposed, and add to that definition a description of products that are not within scope. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you to my colleagues for consideration of my amendment. Thank you, Commissioner Boyle. Uh, is there a second for the amendment? Second. second. Having heard a second, we'll now move to consideration of Commissioner Boyle's amendment. Um, other commissioners will ask questions, make any comments with respect to the amendment, and then we'll come back to Commissioner Boyle at the end. Each commissioner will have up to five minutes per round. We can have multiple rounds if necessary. So I recognize myself for five minutes. Um, and I'll first of all thank Commissioner Boyle for this amendment for her work since uh, the briefing in August to perfect the language and make sure that the definition of subject product is clear and precise, providing clarity for both industry and consumers alike. Um, as I understand the amendment, it will maintain strong protection against magnet products that are demonstrated to create an ingestion hazard. But at the same time, ensure to the extent that there may be a valid uses for high power magnets that they've not been that have not been associated with ingestion incidents, uh, such as research instructions, those uses can continue. Uh, I think this will strengthen the rule and it should be helpful as we go forward if this rule is challenged again. So I'm glad to support this amendment and hope that my colleagues will do so as well. Uh, with that, I turn to Commissioner Biacco. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you, Commissioner Boyle, for the amendment. I think it's necessary. I think uh, there was a little bit of a uh, um, strain uh, amongst the commission with the way the exemptions came in. I do think it needs to be narrowed um, and I will support it. I just have one clarifying question. The term mental stimulation, that 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 is really meaning something to keep you busy like uh, uh, and to pay attention to. There's no physical stimulation with these magnets, correct? I mean, that is my understanding and obviously in the context of enforcement staff would be looking at products in a, on a case by case basis in terms of what that um, uh, would mean in a particular in reference to a particular product. Okay, um, with that, I don't have any additional questions. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Feldman. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I again, thank my colleague for offering the amendment. I have no questions. Commissioner Trumka. Again, and Commissioner Boyle, thank you for this amendment. Uh, we needed it, and I think the exemptions that that were proposed uh, in the final rule up to us. I agreed with the underlying purpose. I mean, we want to allow any legitimate research and instruction use out there, uh, but as they were originally drafted, there was too much daylight for bad actors to try to repack these toys as something that they weren't. The amendment slams the door on that possibility. The way that you've crafted it, it allows narrow categories of legitimate use to continue, but it eliminates those dangerous situations where kids would come into contact with these magnets. Uh, you know, with this amendment, we're only allowing products sold to specific adults through narrow channels for specific purposes. 
and we still go above and beyond the directive that we received from the court. So with this amendment, we've got a very strong rule that will keep kids safe, and I'm very much in favor. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, Commissioner Boyle, did you have anything further to say on your amendment? Uh, no, Mr. Chairman, just to thank my colleagues for their support and consideration. That we're going to move to a vote on the amendment. Commissioner Biacco, how do you vote? I vote yes. Commissioner Feldman? I vote yes. Commissioner Tromka? I vote yes. Commissioner Boyle? Yes. And I vote yes as well. The yeses are five, the noes are zero, and the amendment of, by Commissioner Boyle is adopted. Are there any other amendments? Hearing no additional amendments, I move to approve staff's draft final rule on safety standards for magnets as amended uh, and to direct publication of the same, including conforming changes directed by Commissioner Boyle's amendment in the Federal Register. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. Uh, having a second, we can move forward with a vote. Commissioner Biacco, how do you vote? I vote yes. Commissioner Feldman? I vote yes. Commissioner Trumpkin? I vote yes. Commissioner Boyle? I vote yes. And I vote yes as well. So the yeses are five, and the noes are zero. The motion to approve staff's final, uh, final rule as amended on safety standards for magnets passes. The draft final rule as amended has been approved and shall be published in the Federal Register. We now have up to 10 minutes for commissioner for any closing remarks, and I will start by claiming my time. Now, as I mentioned in my opening statement, this has been a long process, and many people inside and outside the agency have dedicated time and energy to making sure these standards are put into place. Pediatricians and pediatric gastroenterologists who see firsthand the health impacts of these magnets have led the way in pushing for mandatory standards. Consumer aid, uh, advocacy organizations, members of Congress, particularly Representatives Cardinals, Schreier, as well as Senator Blumenthal, maintain attention on the, the dangers of these small and powerful magnets. And inside the CPSC staff have worked relentlessly. And after the 2016 court decision that regrettably put children back at risk, staff turned their desks and developed a rule that accounts for the court's concerns and makes an even stronger factual case for safety standards than the previous rule did. And I think the rule that we're, we've just voted on today uh, is strong, that it will protect children, and it will benefit all of the country as these injuries that we see and have seen far too many of uh, will hopefully uh, reduce the coming days, which if passed is prologue will, de will definitely happen. I'm proud of the work that we've done to finalize this rule and look forward to this implementation. Now, Commissioner Biacco, do you have a statement? Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I also believe that this rule was necessary um, and, and uh, I believe is necessary with the amendment to keep it uh, very strong and narrow. Um, I think that since I've been at the commission, the magnet issue to me has been one of the most dangerous. Uh, and I appreciate um, the other side of this and that there um, are arguments for the utility of these small pieces, but I just do not see them outweighing the type of safety risk, especially to little children that these magnets bring. And for that reason, um, I support the rule and I hope that we don't see another child suffer this type of injury. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Commissioner. Commissioner Feldman. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, to also believe that this rule was a. Uh, Commissioner uh, Feldman, for some reason, I had trouble hearing you. Can you try again? How about now? I'm not are other people having trouble hearing Commissioner Feldman? Yes. So it's yeah. not just me. You were fine a minute ago. It's very soft. Well, I'm not sure what's going on. Uh, I, I no comments. Go ahead. Oh, well, thank you. Uh, listen, I, I uh, uh, too believe that this rule was a, a long time coming, and I'm, I'm proud of the work that uh, we've done today uh, to pass it. I think the fact that the, the rule uh, 
took so long to, to, to get to where we are today is in large part the agency's own doing. Uh, this a coal experience uh, should be a lesson in uh, uh, the fact that uh, in, in pursuing this type of regulatory activity, uh, we need, need to make sure that the agency's actions are underpinned by uh, sound data and science uh, and comply with the, uh, the meets and bounds of, of our statutory directives. Uh, but I'm glad that we were able to get to, to where we are. I think the rule that we passed today is going to save lives. So I appreciate uh, all, all the work agency staff and my colleagues uh, have put into to getting us to where we are today. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Tromka. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And, and I want to clarify one thing. Uh, Mr. Chair, you've now accused both Commissioner Boyle and Commissioner Feldman of being a little soft. And I want to clar clarify, we're talking voice only as it's coming <laughs> over. You've both proven you're tough as nails today. So, uh, <laughs> Uh, but but with this rule, I, look, thank you for to, to everyone who's worked on it. it. It's been an unnecessarily long road, but I'm glad that we're resolving this hazard once and for all. And, and it's sad to think that this agency already solved this problem once uh, before we had two judges step in and set aside the agency's expertise, substituting their own personal desire for deregulation and cost. And and here there was a very very clear cost, real people mostly kids, were hurt by that action in horrifying numbers. And that court delayed justice, but it can't prevent it. And so I'm proud of this agency's perseverance and its empathy. And while they might not have cared about how their actions hurt people, we do. And this agency has proven that when there's a real problem to solve, we are not easily deterred. So thank you to everyone for sticking with this. This rule is going to prevent gruesome injuries uh, to children. So great work, everyone, and thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Boyle. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you to my fellow colleagues for approving this important rule today. And of course, my immense thanks uh, and appreciation goes to the CPSC staff who have worked tirelessly, not only on bringing this rulemaking to fruition today, but for their dedication, as has been said, to this issue for well over a decade. You stuck with it, and because of that, lives will be saved and devastating injuries will be avoided. What we do at CPSC makes a difference. Using our regulatory authority makes a difference. And if there was ever any doubt, the tragic history of magnet injuries to infants, toddlers, and teens over the course of the past 15 years or so surely proves that. As has already been stated, but I think bears repeating, the injury trends that occurred before, during, and after the agency's first magnet rulemaking are eye-opening. For the period 2010 through 2013, before announcement of the magnet sets rule, CPSC estimated that there were approximately 2,300 magnet ingestions treated annually in emergency departments. That number dropped to 1,300 from 2014 through 2016, which corresponds to the year the rule was announced and in place. And after the rule was vacated, that number shot back up to approximately 2,400 from 2017 through 2021. The rule we have adopted today will make a difference. It will make a difference to infants and toddlers who, as we all know, put things in their mouths in the normal course of development. It will make a difference to older children and teens who experiment with piercings. It will make a difference to families who will be devastated by magnet ingestion injuries to their children, which can be lifelong and life-altering and even fatal. It makes a difference to a severely burdened healthcare system that treats these patients. Through our actions today, we are reaffirming our commitment to protecting the, multiple, the most vulnerable among us, children, from this unique hidden hazard. And let me repeat, CPSC staff makes a difference. We are able to act today because of the dedicated CPSC staff. More than a decade ago, staff identified magnet ingestions as an emerging and urgent issue and presented persuasive data on the need to act. And we are acting today because the devastating injuries to children demand such action. And while I certainly would have preferred that the agency's first magnet rulemaking remain in place, I'm gratified that the commission is using its regulatory authority to act today so that once again, we could see a downward trend in these horrific injuries. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Commissioner. And thanks again to the staff and my fellow commissioners for work this, their work on this final rule. And with that, this concludes today's decisional meeting of the Consumer Product Safety Commission. Thank you.